Good evening, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here tonight and this evening. Uh, I have the honour of owning a set of pipes belonging to the late Eamon Kent, and uh, Eamon Kent had three sets of pipes that we know of. He had uh, two sets of villain pipes. The other set of villain pipes is what we call a half set, and it's in the Curragh camp in the officer's mess. And he played the war pipes as well, which is like the Scots pipes, and uh, they're in the National Museum, I understand. I have this set of pipes, uh, which I want to see if there are some copies of photographs in plain if you'd like to hand them around. Nice to meet you, so, uh, <coughs> so you probably know Eamon Kent was born 1891 in, in Gaul, County Galway, on the Roscommon border, a place called Ballymo, and his father was a constable and uh, he's one of seven children. And when he, uh, his education was firstly locally, and then he went to Drogheda draw and then in RD in County Loud. And when he was early teens, he ended up in Dublin and went to O'Connell School. And there, uh, while there, it's a coincidence that some of the other members of the 1916 was there was Con Colbert and Sean Houston. And it's a coincidence that they were Three of them were act executed, actually, on the same day, on the 8th of May. When he was there, uh, he was a very bright student, and he finished top of his class, and he went to work, as we probably know, in Dublin Corporation in the Treasury Department. And that turned out to be a means to an end for him in Kent, because there were a lot of more things on his mind than just working with, with the Treasury Department. And from there, uh, shortly afterwards, about 1900, he found the himself in the Gaelic League, and he absolutely found, I think, really what he was born to speak, and that was Gaelic. He became one of the best speakers out in Dublin within about three or four years, and helped found the coming out in Clontarf. But around 1900, with Edward Martin, he founded the Pipers Club in Dublin. The previous year was the first one in Cork Pipers Club, and he became secretary of the Pibri in Dublin, there in the Pipers Club. And one thing about Eamon Kent was when he did anything, he was totally dedicated and had, was a fantastic organiser. And he began to learn the pipes himself and in a very short time. He became a very proficient piper as well. And as I said, he played the bagpipes as well. And I know he started the St. Patrick's Day Parade in 1902, he led the parade. And also in 1908, his fame had spread at that stage. And he was invited to go to Rome to play for Pope Pius X. And while there, uh, he played uh, at a private audience with Pope Donald Nabu, and he had a, this magnificent Gaelic costume, which I believe he got his sister to make from, and it's in the museum. It uh, goes back, to, I believe, to the 11th century. But when we think of Eamon Kent, that was the time, as you know, of the great Gaelic revival. And he found expression not alone through the language, but through the music. You have poured pierces into poetry, and Macdonough and that, and you had James Connolly into writing ballads but he expressed himself through the music, and especially in piping, and he got it into the flesh kyol piping, and he became a very proficient adjudicator as well. He also, I understand, played the fiddle, the flute, and the tin whistle. And as I say, he was a man of many parts. And uh, we owe him so much, because he recognized, not alone, as we know after the famine, as I say, the land went silent, there was no, uh, a lot of, well, most of the pipers were in the workhouse, and I think it was Martin Riley, the Galway Ryan Piper, who he, met, he brought to Dublin a few times, and he uh, stayed with Eamon Kent, and he learned a lot of his music from him. But what Eamon Kent did was, he realised that the art or the tradition and playing of Irish pipe music had dying or was dying on its feet. And what he did, and what he owe him so much, is that he recognised this and did so much to revive it and keep it going. So much so, from the Pipers Club in Dublin, we had the great tradition of uh, James Ennis, Seamus Ennis, the Rousons came, the Dorns as well, mm -hmm. came to the Pipers Club. And it became, it nearly wiped us, it was nearly wiped out a number of times. And by the time we got to 1968, when the Pibri Island was founded by Brenda Banach, I think there was something like 100 Pipers left in the world, and there was only about two or three people making pipes. Now all this goes back to Eamon Kent and what he did. He's, he was a man of his time and he saw the great need uh, and there's going to be a great loss there. 
and it's to his credit, and we owe him so much for his contribution to traditional music and also especially to piping. Now this set of pipes I got from the late Dan O'Dowd, Donny Carney there when I was a young fella over 50 years ago, and I took up the pipes and uh, I was looking for a set of pipes and he gave me this and they weren't in great condition but I've had them as I said down through the years and only about five or six years ago I actually got them right and got them to play and they're an absolute little gem of the set. Uh, I was going to say, Dan O'Dowd was, was my mentor. Dan O'Dowd was out, he was a member of Nafina in 1916, and he was supported the anti-treaty as well, and he was a great Inham Piper, as we know, and we owe him an awful lot as well. So they come down from, as I say, they were made by uh, Timothy Cana. Timothy Cana was a pipe maker from Mullingar, who was the older and the elder, and the, old, uh, the younger, I should say, and he lived in 186 Key about 18, between 1800 and 1830. So I think these pipes go back to that time. So they've been through the famine, the world wars, and good fight agreement and everything else. And we're here. So I'd like to play a tune for you, if I may. Thank you. Yeah. I'm going to start with a lament, uh, Limerick's Lament. The 17th century was an awful time in this country of ours, as you know. And uh, Limerick's Lament, Battle of the Boyne, 1690, 1691 July, Battle of Ockram, Sarsfield, they all retreated to Limerick, and the Treaty of Limerick was signed, and the, most of our good men left. So this is called Limerick's Lament. <laughs> Thank uh -huh. 